Good morning, everyone. So uh, Monday, the 20th of February, day 167, I think it is. Um, is that right? I can't remember. <laughs> 168. Oops, I um, made a mistake already. <laughs> so uh, here we go. And uh, some funny things going on at the moment. We're waiting for the... Uh, Position to roll over. Abolish has been on uh, one hourly, but we're just changing that to four hourly. But Kirsten, not sure what she's up to there. I think it's the weather. Uh, didn't have much wind. Simon's coming down. Gug's going to get some heavy breezes. And uh, Ian Herbert Jones thought he was in a storm, and it is quite windy. So we'll uh, start off at the back end of the fleet. Before I get there, I just wanted to remind everyone there's a little toggle here for your, your snail trails uh, for all the boats going along. And I think everyone realizes when you're playing with it, if you hit that, you can disappear. So you've got no snail trails at all. Okay, so uh, if we come over and look at Jeremy and Ian now, you've got no snail trails. But if I hit it again, you've got uh, uh, the jeepers. Yeah, you, you've sort of got faint snail trails. Now you've got distinct snail trails for the whole lot. Or you've got little, uh, these are the two worst ones because of their color. There's little short snail trails there as well. So for this, this session, I'm going to use the, the, the big whiz bang so you can see everyone's there. That's Jean-Luc up the top there when he went up to and had a mask problem. And uh, the different colours represent different boats, so you can compare all the different tracks. Anyway, yeah, I got a call from Ian last night. Not a call, rather a message saying, ooh, what's the weather doing? What's the weather doing? starting to blow. So you sent him a forecast last night. Uh, it was blowing quite hard from the south. It was blowing 30 knots, gusting 40 and uh, it was over with pretty quickly it's it's completely docked off now um he had it for about eight hours and uh you know he might have thought it was a big storm coming but it's only a front that came through and ian doing as he does he's been following it uh, just running downwind and now it's uh, going to start it's start back off already it would have been down to sort of 24 25 knots gusting 30 or something the sea will be dying down and uh, all of a sudden he'll be in a, um, a, a that's a, a south southeasterly which is going to progress into slight headwinds he's not going to like that at all so um, that might keep him pushing up in a different direction there for a while uh, Jeremy's been doing okay so Jeremy's doing 1.9 knots uh, with that very little wind but it's slowly going to start increasing and the problem also is that it's uh, headwind so he's got headwinds and if he drives out it's natural to be going out on starboard tack because he doesn't want to just so he go down into the no-go zone. So uh, there he goes again now. Yeah, he's moved up a little bit, but he's bearing away, doing 4.7, uh, just pushed by the southeasterly. And so you'll see him head off to the northeast. He'll keep the wind, no doubt, just forward of the beam, but not hard to windward. There's no point when you're out here. You sail the weather patterns and uh, keep going smoothly. So you can see Ian's uh, 4.9 knots pushing up in the same way, uh, a little bit more extreme than, than, uh, uh, than Jeremy maybe, but Ian's got heavier breezes for sure. So um, that's a bit of an explanation of why they're uh, headed that way. And if we slide forward to about midnight tonight, uh, Ian's got a gentle um, southerly. So he should be coming across to the east and heading out. But Jeremy's going to get this um, southeaster, a good solid southeaster, turning into an easterly up the top here. That's, that's uh, going to slowly increase in breeze. So he's going to go through that little bit of a front as well. Not a, certainly not a storm. It moves over very quickly. And then it starts to head back to uh, start to head back to a, a southerly, and they'll like that because they can just hold it on the beam and go. So this is a little bit more than 24 hours. This is about 34, 34, 34 hours ahead. So a day and a bit, and he'll be underway again. But he's not going to have much fun today, that's for sure. Um, Ian will be a little bit more comfortable. So uh, and then it's a solid westerly. So it's so it's just going to be a day and a bit of frustration for them. And then they've got a lightning westerly back in the 23rd and uh, then they've got a nor'wester so it's all pretty good but they want to come down Ian will want to come down he doesn't want to get caught up here so as soon as he can hopefully he goes east and maybe gets back down again because even though uh, we've been lucky with storms you know uh, it's clearly evident that when you get down if i put the grid on here uh, you know there's 40 up here so this is the this is where you want to be down in the roaring 40s but they're not roaring but at least they're going in a westerly so that's uh, generally those guys for the next couple of days looking okay after the first 30 hours or so. Uh, coming back down, Captain Gook, he's got some breeze coming and uh, we put him on a weather alert last night. I sent him a um, alert for uh, some pretty solid stuff coming this patch here which will come to him during the day. Uh, I'll just get it over here and shrink him down a bit. At the moment he's been doing... Um, six knots and 135 nautical mile a day uh, get rid of that little number 
Um, I'm surprised in a way he's heading out to the east. This is not a good move because you don't want to get caught on a lee shore here when it goes. And the objective is Cape Horn. So when it's reasonable, you know, your game plan is really to come down here and then do the final approach from the west. So I've got no idea why all of a sudden he's heading out here to the east. But he knows what he's doing. He's comfortable at the moment. But, but you don't want to get sucked into this little game here. It's, it's not a good look if it starts to blow. So uh, anyway, he's, that's what he's decided to do. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's going to start to blow. If I start to uh, toggle this through uh, day by day, you'll see um, this big purple patch coming up behind him. Uh, around about here, it's going to be blowing 30 knots, gusting 40, a little bit higher. Uh, it's still not full weather alert stuff, but I've put him on notice that it's coming in uh, because it starts to build and it could be unpredictable. It could build a bit more depending on where he is and where he goes. That's why I'm surprised he's heading out to the east. But anyway, that, in the thick of that, it's going to be gusting 45, six meters, five to six meter seas. Um, and so it's pretty solid. But the big one's coming up after that. So then it settles into a westerly flow, which is OK. But bearing in mind, you know, um, you, you're still going to need sea room so um, hopefully we'll start to see him get some south in that um, but at the same time this this little number comes in and uh, on the edge of that uh, it's going to blow uh, you know probably 35 gusting 45 50 and then we're seeing gusts come through in this depending on where he is ironically if he stays up here he's going to miss this but by then this is nearly two days ahead in two days he's, he's potentially going to be um, you know 280 miles well there's like you know in, in the next couple of days he could be over here somewhere um you know down here which is so so you know you you, you got to be careful here so um hopefully we're going to see some southing in here because yeah there's going to be 45 50 knot gusts in here uh, for sure during that period so um we'll be watching that and i'll update him on the weather uh later this afternoon as well so you can see then it starts to pick up and bearing on remembering where he's going to be not quite on a lee shore but it's it's uh, still pushing in that direction and uh, if he's following the breeze you'll still scoot down so it's not as bad as it seems but nonetheless this is the zone he might be in and there's there's quite a bit of breeze coming in this one so we'll follow that through again tomorrow as well on tomorrow's update and you'll see um, how it's evolving but he's got some wind on the way, which you, uh, is not so bad, you know. <laughs> You've seen he's come all this way without having a bit of a blow. And then it clears up pretty quickly, blows um, from a westerly, solid westerly. So the trick then is even, even that after that blow goes through, if we bring it to the sea state, you'll see there's still a big sea there. That's still probably six metres or so, and the swell will absolutely be going to the west. So he'll be, if he's over here, he'll be taking these sort of five, six metre seas on the, close to on the beam, uh, which can be very challenging. That's why it, it's good to have some, um, some, you know, something in reserve there. Anyway, we'll, um, we'll see how that pans out. And uh, if we come now and have a look at Simon, he looks like he's finally underway. He'll be happy with that. If you look at his track there, if I blow that up, um, You'll see the effort he's had to try and get in here and then get out. Zung, 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 very slow, 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 but it's finally taken off and he's on a roll now. So uh, he's got it on the beam, it's light. The wind's going to slowly pick up by the look of it. Uh, if we come forward, walk that through, yeah, the, the bigger breezes, it's moving into 25, you know, but oh, it doesn't last long, disappears. So he's got a nice breeze, he'll be making good speed. Uh, for now, he's doing 5.4, he's done 116 nautical mile days. He's going to cover some ground in the next 24 hours, so he'll be hooting down there as they say in the classics um, so weather looks pretty good for him uh, going through yeah that's all all really good stuff and he'll probably miss that uh, first big blow uh, coming in yeah he's got he'll be oh we're quite large there so in the next couple of days he's going to um, uh, let's see we're on, it's on the 22nd so two full days he'll probably be two, 280 miles uh, yeah, you're going to be down here in a couple of days, so we'll just be pushing into it. So not too bad at all. So no complaints from Simon anyway. Um, so we can come back off at of that, and we'll zip down and go and have a look at Abolition Kirsten. Now this is, uh, yeah, oh, that's good to see. Okay, so I just Kirsten had been sitting around about one and a bit knots at the uh, 1.2 knots for some time. Another thing just to remember, because you, you, it seems the obvious, but I know some people might miss some of this. There's a little beacon here, a little 
half black white circle if you go like that and if i pan out that tells you where the day night day is so this is daylight here and this is night time here and there's the daylight and you can see that it's all moving that way to the west and um, you can tell when the boats are at, at night versus day so that's always good to know when you're wondering what they might be up to because it's un it's not unusual to sleep <laughs> and uh, stay down during the night sort of thing uh, your days are quite long here the nights are quite short but as they get north they're um, the it, it, the night time increases uh, so I'll get rid of the day night day and we'll build this up and have a look at um, curse and abolish now I have no idea what abolish is up to okay he's been on hourly so let's just discuss his situation right now uh, and all I'm thinking is he may have when he came in yesterday, he was coming straight for the coast here and we were wondering uh, what's going on. But I think that was a case of missing out on waiting for the current to turn uh, for a stretch de la mer, okay, which he did decide to go through. But now um, he's uh, gone through, there was not much wind and he's coming back. And all I can think of is that this is the weather he's got at the moment, um, which is very unusual because he's taken it on port tack, it's night time. So he's on port tack, but he's heading back away from his rum line, seriously from his rum line. And there's no reason that, in my mind, that he wouldn't be going the other way. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? That's La Sable de Lone's that way. <laughs> so um, and we've checked for tweaks. We're not getting any messaging at the moment. Um, there is a bit of wind coming when you look at the forecast here. If I, if I bring this through for Abolish, it's going to pick up. But again, there's no reason for, that he wouldn't be heading the other way. Um, you know he's going to get it anyway so I'm not sure what he's up to right there right at the moment but anyway 24 hours from now you can see he's got a solid westerly that's going to be you know 28 knots gusting 38 or something um, you know somewhere around there and uh, you know but he, he even even if I look at this as a sailing perspective from my point of view if I was sailing here even with this I'd just be running off this way you know like because you've got you got to look at the course where it's going Here's the Falklands, and he's got, a, you know, he's either going to go up this way or he's going to go around this way, whatever. But why is he going back that way? So there is something going on there, and uh, I'm sure we will hear soon uh, about what that is. So um, uh, he's been on one hourly for a while, but we're going to put him back on four hourly now. So um, uh, so we'll look forward to that. Anyway, um, coming over to Kirsten. Kirsten had been sitting there. Was this all? mushy area of nothing confusion not much wind and all the rest of it and she'd been uh, going very slow you can see if we push up the if i magnify her course you can see where she's been um she was just ho hooking around fluffing around with no wind and then she had a little bit with no wind and bang she's taken off again now so doing 6.6 49 nautical miles in the last 24 hours so so that explains her actions and she's on a roll again now and if we come back i'll do it so you can so we can look at um, Abolish and uh, Kirsten's weather uh, together. I'll go one more time and get rid of this, get rid of that. And remember the objective is to get out here somewhere. So Kirsten's now got a bit of a sleigh ride. She, this is looking really good if she can hook onto the back of that. And Abolish should be looking good as well. He's blowing from the west. That's exactly what you want. And he should be roaring up here. Um, but let's just see how it goes. I'm toggling this through every hour. So Abolish has still got a pretty good westerly. Um, Kirsten's got a you know, good, good breeze for going north. Right, uh, or she would just follow that. You don't need to come to the coast because usually you get put pushed to the coast. So there's nothing wrong with riding this out, you know, in um, a northeasterly direction. That's quite favourable. Abolish would be on the beam uh, with this one. This isn't very far advanced, so I'm just pushing it through. That's like midnight tonight. Uh, Kirsten's looking pretty good, um, and uh, she's got now. Then Kirsten's got a northwester, so she'd be able to go out northeast. That's fine. Abolish is the same. He's got a you know, north northwest, so he'd certainly still be able to go out northeast and probably skirt along and go around the Falklands at that stage because it's pretty. That's pretty well established for a few days. And Kirsten will be pushed out to the west, going around. There's a, the high pressure system here. That's that's uh, our friend, the South Atlantic High, breaking up into a mishmash. And there's an, another little high here forming. And that's the way the wind goes around. So she could be sailing nicely along this one. So which she will be doing. Uh, but uh, and uh, Abolish could be doing the same. That's only one day. I'm taking a bit too long to explain this, but um, you can see what's happening anyway. So Kirsten's looking good. 
Uh, Ablis has got some heavier breezes coming there, all from the west blowing him out and away. So hopefully we'll see him turn around shortly and uh, get going. But but yeah, Kirsten will be heading out northeast for sure. So uh, and that's the next couple of days there. And then uh, Ablis, all it's all good to push him around the bottom of the Falklands there. Okay, I think that's uh, about it. I think we've covered everyone. Um, have a good week, and we'll 